Even for plants, death is ever present. But the tree's loss is the camel's gain. Camels specialize in eating the least edible of plants. Their thick, rubbery lips act like fingers to pick up tiny leaves and bark from around large thorns. Like all ruminants, or animals that chew the cud, they don't have teeth in the front of their upper jaw. Instead, the lower incisors nip against a tough palate. It's like a pair of pruning shears, with a blade cutting against the flat surface. The incisors strip bark from the fallen branches. Even the toughest woody material can be ground down by a battery of powerful molars in the back of the jaws. The food will be partly digested and then brought back up for a second chewing to absorb as many of the nutrients as possible. The gorging camels stir up insects that were hiding in the vegetation. Among them, a master of disguise. A female striped or devil's flower mantis. Six centimeters of killer instinct. Despite her weaponry, she's not immune to attack. For a predatory bird, like the sharp-beaked shrike, the mantis could become a meal. She cautiously retreats. But these avian hunters are also hunted. The flocking featherweights don't go unnoticed by the sand cat. With so many pairs of eyes watching, it's hard to sneak up. The camels ignore the community around them. They need to eat as much as they can while the going's good. The hump of a camel stores fat. When food's abundant, its body produces the fat and strong fibrous connective tissue to hold it in place. Most animals store fat on their bodies, but fat's an insulator and would cause a desert animal to overheat. By storing it in the hump, it doesn't interfere with the camel's ability to stay cool. 